Riviera Maya is undeniably one of the most beautiful parts of the world to visit and one of the easiest destinations in Mexico to reach. You fly into Cancun and have an 86-mile coastline stretching along the Yucatan Peninsula at your fingertips. You may very well choose to spend your time in one of the most beautiful beaches in the world in Tulum. If that's not good enough and you want more action, you can head to the fun and gorgeous Playa del Carmen and stroll around Quinta Avenida. You can also slow down life in stunning Cozumel or Islas Mujeres. And I'm not even talking about Cancun yet, which is seems to be one of the forgotten cities now. You can also explore the Mayan Zone, a collection of communities with agricultural and historical significance in the heart of Riviera Maya. What's not to love about Mexico? Do I even need to mention about the food and hospitality? In Brazil, there's a local saying that God is Brazilian because of the beaches, food, beautiful people, diversity, warm climate and location. After countless visits to Mexico, I now have my doubts. Welcome to Riviera Maya. city is only 30 years old right yes actually uh, this city was founded thinking about tourists no tourism you know uh, although the Spaniards came in the 16th century this city started about 30 years ago 25 years ago when my wife came it was a fisherman village about 500 people lived here back in the day Wow 500 and people now, I think I saw 500 people in the last second here. <laughs> yeah exactly now it's a 300,000 people city so it's still growing still growing that's incredible. I love this area. This is one of my favorite places in Mexico. And uh, I'm excited to go to Toulon so we can check out the ruins and also the, you know, the, the beach over there as well. Sure. So nice, yeah. Let's do it. So, so why did you want to become a tour guide? Well, I, I lived a few years in Montreal and I realized that uh, you learn a lot from people. So I like to be in touch with people. Being a tour guide gives me the chance to talk with people from all over, all over the world. So. It's, it's a really great job. Yeah. If you didn't become a tour guide, what would, what would have done? Well, I studied computers back in the past. I'm an engineer. Oh, you're an engineer by trade? Yes. Oh, there you go. But I love to do this. I maybe, prefer this. Maybe we can build some stuff along the Why way. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> so is, is this a good time to be in Mexico right now? I mean, uh, you know, I've, I've checked the news, you know, and there's always like, uh, unfortunately, some uh, you know, shootings and things like that. Like, uh, what, like what, what is your take on that? Yeah, it is true, you know, but I, I would say it's all over the world. It's changing, you know. Anywhere you go now, we're having more problems, more criminals, more fights, gangs, and all these kind of things. So Mexico is the same way, you know. And we're getting more gangs fighting each other. They're fine with the locals. As you can see, this is uh, really crowded. So we're fine, but uh, we got more places that we shouldn't go, especially at night time, you know. What are those places? I know Playa del Carmen is pretty safe, too long, yeah. Cancun for most part. Well, right? yeah, this yeah. is a touristic part of Mexico, so mm -hmm. it's the safest place of Mexico. Mm -hmm. We got uh, the police uh, coming back and forth every few minutes. They care about tourists, you know, so I would say this is the safest place in Mexico to be. I'm glad, that, I'm glad you, uh, you're saying that because a lot of people have the misconception of uh, Mexico being unsafe. I've been here many, many times and I've never even felt unsafe in one single area. Where are you going now? 
we're gonna visit Tulum we need to take a look over there I would say that's the best place to take pictures and to see Mayan ruins because it's a uh, the nearest city is about 45 minutes south from here. Uh -huh. what's, the, what's the story with the Tulum ruins and the Mayans? And Well, uh, every city has a different story. Mayans were the longest, uh, you know, lasting civilization in this continent. They were around for about 3,000 3, years. So they built a lot of cities. Each city is different, mm -hmm. architectonically talking and history too. But Tulum is the nicest because it's the only big city next to the ocean. So it's, it seems like Tulum is the hot spot right now, right? In the Riviera Maya area, right? What, what's going on over there? Why people like Tulum so much? Well, the beach areas are bigger, cleaner, nicer. The hurricanes we had in the past, like in 2005, Wilma, caused a lot of damage in Cozumel Island, Cancun, and even Playa del Carmen. Mm -hmm. But the beach areas in the south, like Tulum, they remain untouched. So, uh, they're still, let's say, nice and big. Do, do people believe in global warming here? Like, what's the... What's the yes, what's the we that? see it, we feel it, actually. Uh, we see it in the ocean uh, with the reef. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of the reef is dying, you know. We got the longest, second longest coral reef in the world here. Mm -hmm. So we see how it's getting smaller and smaller every year. Wow. It's dying. Mm -hmm. The water temperature is uh, getting a bit higher. But just one, two degrees is enough for some organism mm -hmm. to die. Yeah, that's terrible. Yeah. I think. Uh, Hopefully, years from now, we're not going to pay for those, yes. those choices, no. How old is this road? Well, they abandoned this in 1543. But, the first people got here about the year 600 of our time, AD. There's a lot of history about the Maya, so they are known for being uh, good in, in math. They invented and used the zero, the concept of a zero here mm -hmm. in this continent. In astronomy, they were really advanced. They knew all the cycles of the planets and constellations. They were good uh, in commerce. They were trading using the ocean uh, to take products all over the Mayan Empire. Wow. And mm -hmm. also good for uh, their architectonic style. They used to build pyramids that they are. 237 feet high in case of Coba, mm -hmm. and the highest is almost double size that, so like 400 feet high pyramids. So they were good at that. Yeah. Wow, yeah, that's that's amazing. This is uh, the governor house, we call it the palace of the king. And uh, on the left side we have the main temples. The main mm -hmm. temple is called the castle. Mm -hmm. It's the highest uh, building in this city. This is where all of the rituals were taking place here. Pyramids are basically their temples. Yes, they had a complicated religion, more than 500 different gods. So they needed a lot of temples to worship these many gods. Temples, we have about 10 maybe. Mm -hmm. The rest are houses of the nobles. Uh, in the Mayan society they used to build a wall and inside the wall they were living only the upper class. Mm -hmm. So we had about 400 to 800 people living here. So maybe about 50 houses. Mm -hmm. And they were around like 1500 to 1600 people, right? Yes. More or less, yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. okay. We call this the last Mayan city because it was the last city they abandoned in this area, so it's well preserved. All the natives in Mexico, they've been eating whatever they have around. So, mm -hmm. it's not weird that all over the world we eat snakes, mm -hmm. in some places even monkeys, mm -hmm. all kind of wildlife. So here's a hard question, right? Is it true that people eat iguanas here? Come on. No, 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 not at all. Not here. Okay, okay, gotcha. But in the rest of Mexico, we do. They do? Yes. What, what does it taste like? Chicken. 
No way. Everything well done tastes like chicken. You're gonna notice in Mexico. <laughs> so where can we get like iguana tacos? <laughs> Uh, they'll tell the others, I'll take you there. <laughs> so what, what do we have here? It looks like a desk there, the reef, right? Yeah, this is a nice place to take pictures. We've got a couple of between the beach area, the ocean, and the white line you see over there. Mm -hmm. We've got the second uh, longest coral reef in the world. Uh, the one from Australia, this mm -hmm. is about 850 kilometers long, maybe 550 miles long, going from Cancun all the way to Honduras. So wow. you see where the waves are breaking. Yeah. That's where the fish are. Mm -hmm. The people snorkel in this area too? Yes, no? in uh, all of the cities and the hotels we got tours going there. Mm -hmm. The marine life. Sometimes you might see a turtle and a horse fish. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's about to save our lives over here. Favorite thing in the world, coconut water. I can use all the coconut water I can find right now. How is the economy here, like uh, in general? Are the Mexicans like uh, is the, the unemployment low? Like uh, people are like uh, pretty happy overall. Like how is the how's the present economy doing? I would say economy is getting tighter, not only in Mexico, all over the world. But we feel it more here in Mexico. We're getting less jobs. This part of the country, this touristic part, is the wealthy part of the country. Mm -hmm. So here we have a good economy but the rest of Mexico not that much so it's mostly tourism right yeah that's why driving this area of course yes. is there any other like who's the biggest employer here is there any other jobs here or no we don't have industry no farms no big agricultural fields mm -hmm. so it's only tourism in this area not even fishing because we saw the coral reef and it's a protected mm -hmm. area mm -hmm. so we don't have big ships big boats mm. so the boats can come in right a lot of no, big boats in this area around. What's the, what's the hourly wager? Well, we don't have like an hourly wage. In Mexico, we use the daily wage. And it's about what would be four and a half dollars a day. And uh, do you, uh, of course, like, you've probably been checking the news and you've seen uh, what's going on at the border um, with the caravan, with the, the migrants. And uh, how, do, how do the Mexicans feel about that? Well, we understand because uh, all Latin America, we have the same issues. I mean, as we were saying, economy is not good. We're poor countries, in a way to say it. And uh, we feel bad about these people because we know that uh, it's not that easy just to go to another country, you know? There's an immigration process, so we know that they're not gonna be accepted. Uh, at least not, not all of them. So Monroe, we can see uh, progress is slowly moving this way, right? Uh, we know that what Cancun is today, of course, Playa del Carmen was next, right? You see how the, the condos and all the craziness that is over there. This is still kind of like untouched. What do you think 20 years from now, to long is going to look like? I think it's going to grow. It's going to go about the same way that Playa del Carmen, but meantime, this small commerce that starts successful we're gonna keep it this way you know i guess it's gonna last for another 10 years like this before building big hotels or resorts but yes it's gonna keep on growing i would say but at least they're putting some regulations right so there's some regulations in place here so you can't build much you gotta keep like what is it 60 percent of the the green area right yes in your property you gotta keep uh, when you're a hotel 60 percent uh, as a green area so legislation is gonna do better uh, we know that we're not gonna cut all of the trees or the mangrove areas, but it's gonna grow anyway. Not as much as Cancun, but it's gonna grow. So this is a deeper question, but um, I mean, I look, I look how the country is. I mean, that's one of my, I've been in 45 countries, that's by far one of my favorites. I mean, I'd love to retire in Mexico. Right? I mean, I'd like to have a residency tomorrow, if that's good. What do you, uh, what do you think the, the Mexican people are optimistic or pessimistic about the future? We see that the situation is getting tighter in Mexico, you know, when I was a kid, it was an easy life, you know, money was enough, what your parents would make, you know, but uh, every year is getting tighter. We're kind of uh, expecting to see, because all over the world is the same situation, the uh, economy is not doing great in any country, so we know Mexico is not the exception, we know it's going to get harder every time. So. Um, 
we're hoping that technology is gonna help us at some point to get more food and less poverty as you know for for everyone I'm glad I'm, I mean I'm, I'm hoping also that in the future um, you know the US relation with uh, Mexico is gonna be even tighter than what it is today we know that the current administration shook things up a little bit and uh, you know it's such a good neighbor that we want to uh, you know make Mexico better ultimately U.S. gets better when Mexico is better. Yeah. You know, not only that, but you guys are neighbors. You guys help with everything that we do, with our culture, with the food. The people are amazing, hard workers over there. So there's so much, so much contribution. So I'm hoping we can see that in the future. And I'm glad to make another stop here. And uh, I'll be back here in one month from now. So uh, <laughs> no, that's fine. I hope to see you as well. But thanks for everything. I appreciate all you did. Yeah, yeah. So. no, it's fine. Whenever you want to, you're always welcome here. Everyone is welcome to Mexico. Riviera Maya feels like one of the God's gifts of the world. From the food to the ocean breeze, very few places will make you feel more at peace than this part of the globe. Going to Mexico, it always feels like a real vacation, like a legitimate one. A good vacation for me is going to warm weather, be able to go outside in the sun, spend time at the beach, play outside sports, or just relax with great hospitality and food. Sure, Mexico has its problems, but fortunately, you won't encounter them in the very safe tourist areas. Perhaps we shouldn't build walls, but a bridge, a humanitarian one, to continue to help this amazing country that gives us so much joy. Like Albert Schweitzer said, the first step in the evolution of ethics is a sense of solidarity with other human beings. Well said, Albert. Well said.